Hey everybody, uh, we are at a location called Kodachrome State Park. It's about two hours east of Cedar City. And here I want to tell you a little bit about uh, some dating principles. Um, I don't think that these principles will help you on your first or second date. They might if your date is really interested in geology. Uh, but what I'm actually talking about is how we determine the relative ages in different sequences and rock layers. Uh, so this rock behind me is a lot like the pages of a history book. It's telling a story about the history of Earth. And by observing the features within this outcrop, we can determine what happened and the order of events that it happened in. Uh, so what I'm referring to is called the principles of relative dating, which tells us older, younger relationships within a rock sequence. Uh, this can be contrasted with absolute dating, which gives us the actual numerical age of events that happened. So today we're going to talk about five different principles of relative dating. And those are first, superposition. Second, cross-cutting relationships. Third, inclusions. Fourth, uh, original horizontality. And fifth, unconformities. So superposition is a pretty basic principle. Um, sometimes I refer to these principles as the principles of common sense, since they make sense. Superposition states that older, year, older layers are deposited on the bottom and younger layers are deposited above them. So if you look at the outcrop behind me, you'll notice that there are many different layers. The oldest layer is going to be the lowest one, and the youngest layer is going to be the one at the very top. Okay, so next we have cross-cutting relationships. In this outcrop behind me, you might notice that there is a prominent crack or fracture that's cutting through many of these layers. Uh, you might notice that there's also a little bit of, of offset along this fracture. Um, that's because this is a fault. It has shifted some of these layers. So the principle of cross-cutting relationships states that if there is a feature that cuts through another feature, the feature that it cuts through is older and the feature that is doing the cutting is younger. So in this case, the fault, it's cutting through these layers, so it must be younger. If you look really closely, however, you will notice that this fault cuts through all of these layers except for that very topmost capping layer. It stops right before it gets to that layer. That's because that topmost layer is actually younger than the fault itself, and that is why that fault does not cut through it. Okay, so now that we understand the principles of superposition and cross-cutting relationships, let's use those to determine the overall relative dating history of this outcrop. So we can divide this up into four different parts, the, the bottom most, the lowest layer, the layers in the middle, the uppermost layer, and the fault. Can you order those in the correct order from oldest to youngest? Maybe? Okay, so hopefully this is what you're thinking. We have the first or oldest layer is the bottom most. Then we have deposition of the middle layers. Then we have third, the fault cutting through those layers. And then fourth, the youngest feature is that uppermost capping layer. Okay, so now let's talk about the law or principle of inclusions. Uh, here I have this giant boulder. This actually came from the very top of that cliff we were just looking at. It's actually from that uppermost layer. Um, and if you look at it closely, you'll notice that this, this boulder itself is composed of a bunch of different round-shaped rock fragments. Uh, some of them pretty small, others fairly large. Uh, these class can be referred to as inclusions. They are included within this larger chunk of rock. And like I said, uh, these principles of relative dating are the principles of common sense. These rock fragments, since they make up the entire boulder, they must be older than the boulder itself. The materials that make it up have to be older than what it makes. Uh, so the principle of inclusions basically states that the included fragments or pieces are older than what they are found within. Now let's talk about the principle of original horizontality. So this basically states that sedimentary layers, when they are deposited, they're deposited originally in a pretty much perfectly horizontal position. So if we see layers that are not in a horizontal position, if they are tilted 
or if they are folded, we can therefore infer that something occurred after deposition to alter these layers. Um, just to my right, do you notice any layers that might not be perfectly horizontal? Okay, hopefully you can see that there is this prominent frowny face or fold feature that's called a syncline uh, over here. So applied to this scenario, these layers were deposited horizontally first, then tectonic stresses acted upon these layers to fold them into that shape. And that is how we use the principle of original horizontality to determine the relative ages of events in rock sequences. All right, now let's talk about the principle of unconformities. So an unconformity is a buried erosional surface. And what that means is you have a body of rock and the uppermost portion of this body of rock is removed by erosion, leaving behind an uneven surface. And then deposition occurs above that surface. Okay, so the unconformity represents that missing material. It, it shows a uh, missing time. Okay. Here behind me, we have a great example of an unconformity. In the lower layers, in this folding structure, you can see that these layers, they end up ending abruptly at this uppermost capping layer. That's because right at below this capping layer is an unconformity. The layers below it used to to go up to a much higher altitude, but then they were removed by erosion, and then that highest, youngest capping layer was deposited above that erosional surface. One great evidence of this is shown just to my left, where you can see this, this top uppermost layer actually dips down quite a ways into the layers below that. That's because that, that actual location was some sort of river or stream channel that incised or cut into the layers below it even further. And then it filled in uh, with sediment. Okay, uh, So this is an example of an unconformity that's called an angular unconformity because the layers below it are tilted at a different angle than the layers above it. There are also other unconformities, such as a disconformity, where the layers below it and the layers above it are at the same angle, and a nonconformity, where the rock body below isn't sedimentary, it's igneous or metamorphic, and the rock above is sedimentary. And those are the three types of unconformities. Kodachrome State Park is absolutely famous for these really prominent rock pillar features. They're found all over the place throughout this park. So I figured I might as well take the chance to explain how these formed. Well, we get a lot of clues as to how they form from um, different areas throughout the park. Uh, we can see them forming in different stages. In many rock outcrops, such as the one we visited, uh, you can see that there is a prominent vertical feature, vertical sand feature, that is cross-cutting the many horizontal layers. Uh, this feature, this vertical feature, is called a clastic dike and it is caused by sand being forced upward through an existing crack. Uh, well, that is pretty much the first step of its formation. And we think that the sand was forced upward a long time ago when this area was undergoing um, volcanic activity and you had a lot of groundwater being heated up and moving around, a lot like Yellowstone is today. So the, the groundwater moving around caused the, the sand to be forced upward through cracks and it also allowed for this sand to be more well cemented and become more resistant than the rock that it was forced up through. So over time, the surrounding layers eroded away, leaving these prominent vertical features behind. And that is the prevailing theory for how these things formed.